Happy Wednesday to you, Wednesday the 19th of January, 2011 A.D. We have quite an extraordinary show for you today. Uh, looking forward to presenting it to you. If you're, we're going to talk today about the movie Zeitgeist. It's a movie that most of you are familiar with one way or the other. You've certainly heard the word or the term Zeitgeist, which is a fun, it's a German word. It means literally time ghost, and it basically means uh, sort of the cultural sense of where we're living at this time and what the general vibe is, something along those lines. It comes originally from Greek etymologically, and it is a term that we use because we don't really have an English word for that sort of thing. Well, a very, very brilliant um, filmmaker, writer, uh, creator, former ad man, and humanist named Peter Joseph is behind not only the first Zeitgeist movie, but then the second one, Zeitgeist Addendum. And now the third one, called Zeitgeist Moving Forward, which just had its Los Angeles premiere over the weekend, to a fully sold-out theater. I mean, just not even standing room only, not even hugging room, not even sweating room in the lobby, right? And simultaneously being released all over Earth in about 60 different countries, in about 30 different foreign languages. Uniquely, this is probably a Guinness Book of World Records uh, event, that a documentary, now this is not a, a feature film, this is a documentary, uh, never before has a documentary had a global release like this with that kind of occupancy. It's also playing right here in Los Angeles as we speak at the Lemley Theater in Beverly Hills. Now let me just give you a little bit of background so that you can really sort of appreciate uh, the movement, the zeitgeist movement, which is about fundamentally um, losing this notion that we have of using money, you know, that we print out of thin air with no collateral collateral uh, based on nothing um, and you own nothing and when nothing is taken away from you you really own nothing mm -hmm. unless you're at the very top of the heap then you own all the nothings that everyone was forced to relinquish to you the somebody because there are nobodies basically uh, not even basically but uh, tangentially that's sort of what it's about now the response to the film so far globally has been huge reports are coming in from all over the world that they're sold out crowds 500 plus capacity theaters additional screenings have been booked to meet this demand and as well as larger venues are opening everywhere, like in Italy, where there are 19 theaters screening Zeitgeist moving forward. It's arguably the biggest TV celebrity in Italy, a guy named uh, Paolo Bonales, and he went to the Rome screening and publicly expressed his love for Zeitgeist moving forward. So European celebrities, as well as American ones, are standing up and linking themselves to this movement. We're going to get into what is the Zeitgeist movement, why is it for many controversial, why is it for many the answer? the absolute solution. Um, the uh, Italian celebrity said he wants to dedicate an episode of his show called Il Senso della Vita to the Zeitgeist movement. What would that mean? The sense of life? That sounds... <laughs> Maybe close. Uh, yeah, via yeah, 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 and it's one of the biggest watched shows in Italy, reaching eight million viewers. I'll bet you Rupert or uh, uh, uh. Sylvia hates that or loves that. We're not sure. <laughs> it broadcasts in the main Italian TV channel, so it's a fully mainstream movement in Europe. That's kind of the point. The notion of sustainability of the environment, of this calculus of if I eat that or buy 200 of those that I don't need that are actually maybe manufactured abroad, have to be brought over in a ship that burns diesel going through the northern pass, blah, 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 how everything is ultimately interconnected. That is mainstream thinking uh, in places outside of the U.S. Now, that's not to say that you don't think that way. Of course you do. And tens of thousands and millions of us here do too. We just don't seem to have that reflected back to us by our politicians. We don't have that reflected back by uh, NBC, uh, also known as General Electric, the largest weapons contractor on earth, uh, or uh, Rupert Murdoch and Fox or any of that. We're all told it's a big hoax, shut up and go buy something. Mm -hmm. And so we get confused when the grown-ups, the adult supervision, the players whom we've picked to represent us, uh, tell us what we're, uh, what we're actually thinking over and over and over again until we actually start to think what they're telling us we're thinking, or we're not sure what we're thinking anymore, so we stop thinking. That seems to be what's going on here. So without further ado, let me introduce, we're also going to open up the phone lines and let you check in with Peter Joseph, because he is a hero to so, so many, and that would be the founder of the Zeitgeist Movement, the director of the movie Zeitgeist Moving Forward. And welcome, you're on with Harrison, Peter. Well, thank you, Harrison. I really appreciate you having me on, and uh, I, I'm 
I'm very happy to hear the resonance of these ideas in yourself and everything that you've just stated and the support that's come from KPFK after all these years. So thanks again. Was that a lofty enough encomium, or <laughs> can I pick you up higher on a pedestal? <laughs> because we can. Yeah, because we can here. Now, right. it, this is this is kind of how people talk to you, isn't it? In a sense of, well, not always. Well, we're well, right, right. So it's it's a, a lot of it. A, a lot of it is either "Wow, we!" It's Peter Joseph, or "Wow, we!" It's Peter Joseph. But there just doesn't seem to be much like "eh" in the middle, right? Well, it's either a hate, a hate or love scenario. That's that's for sure. I tend to find that to be true. Uh, either people get it and they really support it, and or people really just be are offended by the ideas that I promote, uh, whether it's in the movement or the film, and they shy away or they attack me, of course. But uh, that's all to be expected. You know, that's the spectrum that we have today. We have a very divisive culture. We have a lot of people that really can't see eye to eye on the fundamentals of life or the, you know, what brings us together. They've been so indoctrinated into, into divisionary ideologies and hyper-independence in America. You know, we have this obsession with being independent and basically anti-social. I mean, America really is an anti-social country by its very foundation. But uh, we can go into those subjects as we proceed. Let's do that. And let's uh, pretend we're in an elevator with all the listeners. It's an extremely huge elevator, uh, probably the size of Maryland. But we're in there with all the listeners right now. And let's assume that many of them haven't seen or have only seen clips maybe on YouTube, even though your film is freely available, something you've started since day one. Uh, nobody's turned away for lack of funds, and nobody needs funds. But let's let's assume that they may not remember or they haven't seen it. How do we describe the Zeitgeist movement or your Zeitgeist movies? Well, the movies are on a spectrum of information, so that's a very long-winded discussion. Uh, if you would like me to surmise the project as a whole, I would say the, the three films deal essentially with culture, and they deal with different aspects of culture from mythological issues, and I'm not just referring to religion, but mythology of ideology and indoctrination that has been pressed upon people through education and you know false history things that tend to support you know what you know, tend to support the value systems of the power establishment which is what any any ruling class does in any society since the divinity of kings is to try and impose the values that support those that are continually in power so the films run a gamut of such information. They try to open people's minds to new information, things that they probably have never thought about or they have never heard about, uh, and ultimately try to bring human unity and, and, ulti- and excuse me, the evolution of this, uh, which, again, has changed since day one. When I first made Zeitgeist in 2007, uh, it was a very different uh, kind of train of thought as to what I have today with Zeitgeist moving forward. So there's an evolution of thought, uh, even though there is an underlying current through the entire thing of critical thinking, and things as such, and of course, an interest to make an interest to make a better world, which is the ultimate point. So, the film series has its evolution. I'd like to talk about that guys moving forward. And if you wanted me to address the other films, and of course, my first film is, I'd say, <laughs> the most attacked film of all time. It's probably going to go down in history as the most controversial film of all time. And after all these years, it still doesn't lose its momentum. I'm amazed. I don't know of any other film out there that continues to to pull in this tension between different groups. Well, let's yeah, let's dialogue. yeah. I mean, let, let's take a look, Peter Joseph, and and we are going to we are totally talking about Zeitgeist moving forward as well. Is sure. not everybody, you know, there are people that might be sixty plus or seventy plus or eighty plus who don't have, as Mr. Bush called them, the internets, <laughs> right? And so they may not have actually seen this, and so it's important, and, and they may agree with the values presented. So this might be the first time they're being introduced to this. But you take in your movies, you talk about say the origins of Christianity, and you go back to pagan rituals and track it through. Now, a lot of this would be controversial to people who have uh, extraordinary, um, uh, you know, faith-based faith, 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 you know what I mean? Like uh, the, the dendrites and synapses don't necessarily spark. It's all about the heart and not the head muscle. And, and you show that how stuff is actually interconnected. You also take a look at our economy and something like the Fed, uh, which controls our monetary system. And we think the Fed, because it has the name Fed, is part of the federal government. But we find out through your films, oh, 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 oh no, it's not. Right. Yes, of course. The Federal Reserve is a banking cartel of commercial banks. It's a, I mean, if anyone hasn't figured this out with the $20 trillion bank bail, bailout, where did it go? It went to the Federal Reserve cartel. This outrageous amount of money went to a series of institutions that literally operate in no productive way whatsoever. They're, they're, uh, they're arbitrary institutions for the sake of this game navigation that we've invented. 
And while they continue to pay themselves, you know, multi-million dollar bonuses, the, the public sits by and actually thinks that uh, this type of bailout had something to do with them when it didn't whatsoever. And that, again, I, that, it's a stable of proof. I, I, don't have to, I don't even have to argue this anymore that the, the Federal Reserve Commercial Bank cartel is in power. I mean, only that institution and its conglomerates can, uh, or its, its subsidiaries, if you will, could possibly uh, manufacture the need to give, be given 20 to 23 trillion dollars, essentially, of U.S. funds that the public is going to be paying back for decades in debt. Uh, because We're talking to Peter Joseph. He is the director of the movie Zeitgeist Moving Forward. He's also the founder of the Zeitgeist Move Me, Movement, of which there are multiple chapters here in Los Angeles, chapters across the United States, chapters across the world. And let's talk a little bit about Zeitgeist Moving Forward. This thing has exploded around Earth. So your vision of just a couple of years ago, I mean, you're still a new daddy on this stuff. Uh, your babies have cloned themselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. I want to point out the community effort here. This is uh, truly unprecedented. You know, people see me as sort of the face of this kind of momentum, but there are thousands of other faces that deserve equal recognition that have taken it upon themselves in a nonprofit manner at their own risk to go and get contracts with, with main, major theaters in their area and to, and to take the risk of putting this film on at their own expense. Uh, any revenue that do are acquired from their releases go towards their chapter, and this is also a mild fundraiser, essentially. But uh, it's been incredible. There's 333 screens. Uh, it, we are adding more screens, as you denoted earlier. I never expected any of this. I expected maybe 30 screens because it's a very risky thing, and we're talking thousands and thousands of U.S. dollars equivalently uh, that have been spent on people wanting to get this message out on their own accord. And uh, I just find it a, a, a beautiful recognition of the power of community, and this is something that we really have to revive across the world uh, at this stage in social evolution. It's been lost, we've been detached from it, and it's this power of community that will eventually save us all, if, if I can be so blunt. But, um, yes, I'm truly amazed at what's happened, and I, my heart goes out to all those that have actually been, been doing this on behalf. And I just want to point out that it isn't about promoting, like I was moving forward, Peter Joseph's film, it's about promoting these ideas, which are multifaceted throughout the entire film. The film is a tool. I don't even consider myself a filmmaker. I just happen to be one. I just use it as a tool for my own activism and, and trying to get to people, get them to think critically about certain things. And if you've seen the film, which I know you have, uh, by the end of the film I talk about the reasons why this is so critical and the tr social train wreck that uh, humanity is on pace to, to uh, execution, if you will, um, that needs to be addressed before things get worse and worse and you know, we could possibly reach the point of no return, both ecologically, both as uh, a state of conflict and a state of... Um, in a state of human behavior. I mean, once things break down, you're going to see a lot of people get very, very angry, and uh, it's going to get really ugly if people don't realize the solution. And uh, we're going to get into that in just a minute, sure. Peter Joseph. We're going to actually break down what it is that Peter's talking about, where he's talking about breakdown. What We're going to talk about Zeitgeist moving forward, this movie that is exploding all over the world right now. We're going to talk about the controversy. We're going to talk about some of the accusations. We're going to talk about the celebration of the potential future that this movie talks about, people like Jacques Fresco and others presented in it, who uh, explain and break down where where we're at, how we got here, and what the solution is. And that's something that we're going to be looking forward to. Plus, we're going to be taking your calls. We're talking to Peter Joseph. He is the founder of the Zeitgeist Movement. He is also the director of the film Zeitgeist Moving Forward that has exploded all over the world with hundreds of screens. Uh, simultaneously, there are celebrities, movie stars from different nationalities championing this film, and it talks about things to come. And because we have listeners listening online in Europe, I've got emails here from Mexico from uh, Afghanistan even, uh, who may or may not have heard of this movie, believe it or not. At this point, uh, we are gonna, we're, we're grateful that Peter has summarized it. And let's talk now about Zeitgeist moving forward, Peter Joseph. What is the, uh, the ultimate um, end game in this movie? The ultimate point is that not only does our current social system, or more specifically the socioeconomic system, the underlying mechanics of how we orient how we live, in this system. Not only is that detrimental to human health and create neuroses and create propensities towards addiction, create uh, voids, emotional voids, people's needs are simply not met in this system. You don't have a right to life inherently when you're born on this planet in this system. You have to earn a living, as they say. You have to earn your right to live. And to do so, you have to go through all of these twisted ins and outs that make very little sense whatsoever 
from the standpoint of um, of uh, you know, what's actually real, from the standpoint of what what could be done to make life actually beneficial, what we could do if we actually listened to nature and listened to what it offers us to realize the abundance that we could create. That's one side of it. The, ultimately, the system is going to break down. We add one more thing, an addendum to this, no pun intended. The system is also on pace to breaking down. The system can't sustain itself. The system is is a is a growth-based paradigm, which invariably it's impossible for things to grow forever. And we can't have a system based on consumption, based on um, people having to constantly buy and buy and buy, and in order for jobs to be created, in order for GDP to rise, in order for any form of so-called economic sustainability to persist, there's, gonna, there's a need for constant resource consumption, and that has to go to infinity, and that's also technically impossible. The third part of that point is that we live in a debt-based system. The debt-based system is slowly sucking the entire world into a black hole. It's inevitable. It's been going on for 150 years. Uh, the paradigm we're at now with these country collapses and banking collapses and everything that we've seen really was mathematically predictable a long time ago. And to be perfectly frank, I think that the institution, the major government institutions, the banking institutions have been anticipating this day for a very long period of time. But that's for another conversation. So we have all these problems throughout society, from our human health, our needs not being met, the creation of neuroses and addiction, to the breakdown of society, the depletion of resources. We are now running out of the most foundational resource, or excuse me, we're on pace to run out of the most foundational resource, which is oil. The hydrocarbon economy we've built is, is impossible to sustain, and not one initiative is really being made by any governments across the world to try and compensate for this. I mean, there's... Is there are solutions, but no one's doing anything. Why? Because the monetary system will, will make, excuse me, agents of the monetary system, those that really are involved in the monetary system, the 1%, if you will, are going to make a fortune as the system breaks down at the expense of uh, the larger mass of people across the world. So there's no incentive to want to change anything for the better. All of that noted, all of that noted, what I present is a radical shift, a radical shift on a resource-based economy that says, okay, let's forget about everything we've been doing uh, the past number of centuries, or in fact millennia. Let's, let's start fresh and analyze the earth and analyze our relationship to the earth, understanding we have simple human needs. We have to have food and water and the resources of life. We have to have shelter. We have to have the ability to produce. We have to know how to distribute. And they all should be done in the most efficient way possible, right? Because we live on a finite planet with finite resources. Very, very simple, straightforward, physical train of thought. And in a third part of the film called Project Earth, after I go through, in a prior two parts, exposing all the issues and problems of human deprivation and debt collapse and the like, I present this new train of thought. And the resource-based economy concept is, as I just described, very, very simple from the ground-up approach. I could uh, talk at many, many different angles about what it means. But what it is, if I was to put it into a sound bite, Perfect. It's, it's the scientific method applied to social concern. It's saying to ourselves, okay, let's stop a moment. What does science have to say about what we can do? I mean, we don't really use science in a direct social sense. You'll tend to find, I mean, even Bush removed his entire scientific committee. Lu committee. Luckily, Obama brought them back, but their role is utterly minimal. You know what I mean? They don't really, they don't actually engage them on real decisions. Everything is based on money. So if a problem needs to be resolved, they say, okay, how much money do we need to resolve the problem? And then it has to go through the little cycles of corporate interests and to figure out, you know, we can't hurt this industry, we can't support this industry too much, we can't make a monopoly for this industry. And the direct route of just simply applying the knowledge is completely lost in the equation of the monetary system. So solutions don't come about uh, in the way that they should, in the way that they're going to have to come about if we're going to resolve the problems we have today with energy depletion and all the things that are addressed in the film that I won't go on a tangent about. So a resource-based economy is based on a moneyless system. It's recognizing the fact that we don't need money anymore. We can create a access abundance for all the world's people, statistically proven. What that means is that we get rid of the kind of property notion, okay? Ooh, I know everyone's shuddering and thinking, oh, that sounds like communism. 
well, let's listen to the train of thought and not put labels on things. And I'm just going to pause you there because that was the longest soundbite ever recorded, and I'm very grateful. We have to okay. pause for news. We're talking to Peter Joseph. He is the director of Zeitgeist Moving Forward. He is the founder of the Zeitgeist Movement, which has exploded all over Earth. His documentary is probably uh, going to be a Guinness Book of World Records uh, maker in that a documentary has never had such saturation all at one time with additional screens being added. It talks about a sort of uh, utopiast uh, uh, end game here, where we all have to make nice, nice in the sandbox of possibility uh, and have a resource-based economy where using technology and computers, it imagines how many uh, apples we're all going to need, and it provides that many apples. The computer itself could actually manufacture something like an apple using 3D printers and or a harvesting just the amount of apples for just the right population. All of it uh, does make sense. He does plan it out, and all of this could take place over the course of about 10 years. It would be a radical shift. We're going to get into that. We're also going to talk to Peter about um, interesting CNN and NBC accusations where they're endlessly looking for scapegoats for, uh, you know, Jared Lee Lofter and other shooters. Well, I, he liked this movie, too. Uh, you know, he might have also liked uh, The Three Stooges. We just don't know. But, of course, it's easy to point at Peter. Peter made a public statement about that, um, and we'll get his vibe on why the mainstream media looks at him suddenly in the middle of nowhere and uh, is trying to put culpability on him. This all, We are uh, talking very happily with uh, Peter Joseph, who is a film director who has three documentaries now. The third one, which is playing right now in the Lemley Theater here in Los Angeles in uh, Beverly Hills, is, uh, well, it's doing gangbusters, and new screens are opening up all over the world. This may be a Guinness Book of World Records winner that a documentary could be globally opening simultaneously and doing so well, and it's a uh, basically a story about what's going on now, how we got here, and what the future rescue could be, acknowledging climate change, acknowledging something called nature, acknowledging we the humans living thereupon, and all of the interconnectedness between life forms, machinery, and government and uh, what the ultimate end game can be. We're going to go to Brian and Aaron and Steve and everybody else in just one minute. We just want to ask Peter, uh, who had to make a public statement because the mainstream network, the corporate commercial networks, uh, were like looking at you suddenly for uh, what happened in Tucson and you had to stand up and, and give a, a long disquisition on this thing. Yeah, well, you know, scapegoat journalism has been with us for a long time. If you were to analyze, you know, any reputable criminal psychologist's uh, analysis, excuse me, of what causes such random acts of violence, none of them in their right mind would ever point to a book or a song or a band or a movie. Only the media comes up with stuff like, stuff like this, and usually the mainstream media. So now all the kind of conservatives and those that have disliked my ideas for so long have, a, <laughs> have something to hold on to. So. All across the web, you see these belligerent blogs being made. Let it be noted real fast that uh, the individual that made the comment, Zach Olson, hadn't even seen Jared in two years. So you're talking about a two-year-old testimony. If I was to go out and kill a bunch of people, would you really care what my state of mind was two years prior in abstraction? So it's non-scientific. It's uh, traditional in the, in the view of the media where they try to explain these events, try to give complacency to the public through a virtually arbitrary connection, and then they run with it. And uh, it's an unfortunate reality, whether it was the Charles Manson murders and Helter Skelter written on the wall that made the Beatles' White, Out of, White Album Association, or whether it was Judas Priest in the 1990s with the two kids that got drunk and shot themselves, and they actually had to go to court for subliminal messages, or whether it was the Columbine massacre in Marilyn Manson. So now it's a uh, you know, this mass murder and it's zeitgeist. What else is new? All I can do is keep moving forward, no pun intended. <laughs> oh, I'm sure pun intended. But that's okay. Yeah. You're Let's up. go next to Aaron in Costa Mesa. You're on with Harrison and Peter Joseph. In your knowledge of fact that your organization has probably been infiltrated many times over by so many people within these uh, cabalistic societies and what have you. All right. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly what you're asking me to acknowledge. Let me see if I understand, though. I ultimately... Obviously, the nature of control is a given in this, in considering the social system that we have, which is based on social Darwinism. So it's a gaming strategy, and it works in many different levels. I've never, I've never drawn any lines with that, so I'm not quite sure what you're asking about. And as far as you know, the, the right and left, or in 
infiltration or the zeitgeist movement. I'm going to have to kind of project as to what you might be referring to. Uh, the zeitgeist movement is very clear cut and it's very straight to the point. Uh, the, we are actually ignoring the current system in our direct uh, communication of what we want. We're not saying that we're going to, you know, in, help this system. This system's dead and it's going to die one way or another. We're trying to give the audience, excuse me, the public a an informative look at what a new society might be like that is technically feasible, that can support all the world's people and meet the needs of all the world's people. That's all That's all we're advocating. And my films are, in fact, separate from the Zeitgeist Movement. They support it, but they're still my own communication. So let's, let's make sure that distinction is made as well. I hope I answered your question. 44 minutes past the hour. We're talking to Peter Joseph Harrison with you. You're listening to Go Harrison on KPFK 90.7 FM Los Angeles. Peter Joseph is the director and founder of the Zeitgeist Movement. His movie is currently playing here in Los Angeles at the uh, Beverly Lemley Theater. It is also playing all over the world right now. It had its uh, Los Angeles premiere simultaneous with the world premiere in multiple countries, about 60 at least. I may be off by uh, even up to 10 or 20 or 30 by now. It translated into 30 different languages. Uh, what happened is a vision, which he's been giving out freely for no charge for a number of years, including posting all of his documentaries online for free, has turned into a full international movement. Uh, and his goal ultimately was to get the message out, and the message is now getting itself out, which uh, adds to the credibility and and the goodwill nature of it, uh, despite the controversy inherent in offering a solution, because we're all going to imagine uh, alternatives to what Peter has. And Peter, uh, before we jump back to the phones, is is utopia a, a reasonable semi-descriptor for this in some way? Well, I, no, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. I, that's a loaded word. That's, a, that's an unobtainable concept. It assumes a finite ending. While I believe that the sustainability protocols that I outline in the film are empirical. I mean, we do need air and water. I mean, these are standard things, and nothing's going to change that. Maybe through time we'll evolve, you know, to have photosynthesis or something, but that's way down the road. Nevertheless, uh, utopia is the wrong word. I mean, nothing, everything changes. Everything is in a process of change. It's an emergent world. So even the Venus Project, the resource-based economy, uh, the ideas of Jacques Fresco, and he admits this outright, are only stepping stones towards an increasingly improved society as technology continues to change. Really quickly, one point I make in the film is that the, the ultimate backbone of all social transitions, of all movements in the different social systems, has been technological invention, whether it was the agricultural revolution and the plow, whether it was the industrial revolution and the powered machine. And then we have this sort of information age revolution now with the advent of computers and artificial intelligence and the like, and of course technological unemployment, which is now challenging the system explicitly. This is, this is just more, these are more and more steps in an endless, evolu endless evolution. So it's important to rec recognize there are no utopias, and just because it sounds fantastic, doesn't mean it's it's utopianistic. So I just that's important to clarify. Thank you. Let's go next to my lease. My lease. You're on with Harrison and Peter Joseph, director of Zeitgeist Moving Forward. Hi. Hi. Nice to talk to you and hear from you. Um, I just wanted to support what you're saying regarding moving into a future where we have uh, technologies and integrated um, uh, systems that help us to live here without causing problems and be in the midst of problems. We have been developing hydrogen fuel cells for a long time and have had a lot of problem in implementing them for the same reasons that you mentioned earlier. So um, I just want to say thank you for putting it out there that you know we can have these solutions implemented and it will lead to a better world. At the moment, it's really hard for companies like us to make the impact that we want to make because of the lack of information out there and the lack of vision, and people really don't believe that it's possible. One of the main things that we had is people like, oh, you're too good to be true, you know, and it's really been a problem. So thanks very much, and, um, and just, yeah, keep promoting it because it is there. There are people out there, the technology exists, it could be implemented now, but people have to make sure that they know about it and they have to make sure that they do something to have it implemented, i.e. say, we want it. So thanks for giving people an opportunity to do that. Thank you, Bylise. Thank you so much. Your Harrison hotlines are 310-737-TALK, 310-737-TALK, 310-737-8255. Talk to Peter Joseph, the director of Zeitgeist Moving Forward. And Peter, what about an online experience? Since these movies are for free and for fun right now, uh, you know, apart from being in theaters, uh, people who want to re-experience or maybe see it for the first time, what do you recommend they do? 
the online uh, release will begin January 25th, if not maybe a few days earlier, depending on how the reaction continues with uh, with the global release. I, this is the first time I haven't released the film immediately. Uh, I just wanted to get the people that had committed funds and uh, you know outrageous amounts of time and preparation for their releases to get an audience. And as I think I mentioned earlier, it serves as a mild fundraiser for the chapters in the community. So that was one part of this goal, is to try and help out the chapters that really do need help. Um, we don't like to operate with money, but sometimes it's going to help. So this is the idea. Uh, January 25th, they go to zeitgeistmovie.com or zeitgeistmovingforward.com, and they'll be able to download the full 200, excuse me, two-hour, 40-minute film uh, through Torrent, uh, and they will be and burn it to DVD themselves, and they'll be able to watch it online for free through various online uh, mediums. And of course, there's a five-dollar DVD that's there if anyone wants it. But uh, I'm trying to make this, so I am making this completely free for anyone that has the ability to burn a DVD, which most commercial computers do now. I would like to say one thing in respect to the comment that sure. the individual that just called said. Um, people say that, oh, this will never happen. And by, believe me, I get this all the time because they're locked into the mind lock frame of re- reference that they live in today. And this is nothing new. Go back to you know ancient Greeks, and they had the same type of propensity. It's every single cultural paradigm assumes that they are at the apex of civilization. Right, the Greeks had slaves, right? And they were at the right. apex. And our founding fathers had slaves, and they were at the apex. Good point. Yeah, but it goes on and on. And the same, the same pattern will emerge in future societies. It's just a strange tendency of, well, it might change, actually, if people realize things are emerging, which they haven't, but uh, that's for another conversation. <laughs> people, used to say, uh, people used to say that, oh, we're going to go to the moon. And they were called Mooniacs. They were. <laughs> you had experts come out that re- were in aeronautics, you know, in the early 20th century, that said it's impossible to go to the moon. It's impossible to fly. The Wright brothers were bicycle mechanics, and they didn't know it was impossible, so they made it happen. You know, we have to get out of this this temporal mind block. And generally speaking, anytime you hear anyone say it's impossible, 99% of the time they're wrong, and that's what history has proven. Uh, as long as you regard the the um, the laws of nature. Our ability to to manipulate our scientific knowledge seems to be so vast, far beyond anything people have ever imagined. And I want to just kind of implant that seed that anyone that says it's impossible, they're most probably wrong in whatever context they're talking about. I love it. Mm-hmm. 52 minutes past the hour. Harrison with you, your new best friend. You are listening to Go Harrison on KPFK 90.7 FM in Los Angeles and everywhere else. Streaming live at kpfk.org where we have plentiful archives uh, along with GoHarrison.com. Talking to Peter Joseph, director of the movie Zeitgeist Moving Forward, which is playing uh, all over the world right now, all over the United States, with chapters uh, alive and blooming, uh, really getting a ton of spotlight as people seem to get uh, hungrier and more uh, disenfranchised. They seem to be much more open and available to looking at solutions, and the solutions here are actually extremely comfortable. It's not about suffering and pain. It's actually about flourishing and cooperation and, uh, you know, taking advantage of Earth, which is, you know, been taken advantage of, but it's about to co-op. Back to the phones, back to the fun. Say hi to Steve. You're on with Harrison and Peter Joseph. Hello, Harrison. Hello, sir. And hello, Peter. Um, first of all, I, I just need to say thank you. Thank you so much for um, making this movie. I w- it was referred to me by... Um, a friend who's a successful small business owner and not a lunatic with an automatic. <laughs> and um, so he referred the movie. I went online, and I actually saw it on YouTube, um, and I, I saw the whole series about the Federal Reserve, and, and it just blew me away. You know, um, I, I, I knew some of that stuff because I like to stay informed, but your movie just put it perfectly into perspective. Um, it was it was well made. It was it had entertainment value, and um, I, I have it liked on my Facebook page. And I think everyone who has Facebook should make a statement and just um, click like on the Zeitgeist movie. So thanks for that. All right, thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. How about next to uh, Bob in Sherman Oaks? Bob, you're on with Harrison and Peter Joseph. Hi, can you hear me on the speaker? Yeah, yeah. we hear you great. Okay, um, I'm working on something I've been working on for too many years. I'm age 72, been through New York, San Francisco, uh, uh, WBAI, KPFA, KPFB. Anyhow, we can start an entirely new, I hate to use the word empire or state of being, it's called the state of California. If every 
progressive, every radical, every left-wing liberal who wants a humane society over the next 15 to 20 years is to come here for 15 days, which is all you need to be here, to register and find an address of someone who lives here, and, and it, it then becomes your address. You can register to vote. You can then go back to where you are uh, doing some other things, only having to state the intention is you will return to California at some time permanently, and your vote will continue to count as an absentee ballot, and we can bring all the people who are scattered in small little units all over the United States and the world and all the NGOs and all the humanitarians into one place and create a nation state under state rights of 36 to 38 million people as of now, 20 years, who knows? That would make it one of the largest countries in the world, uh, run by our rules under the Constitution because state rights are still gives us tremendous powers, as we all know from education to prisons to, to you name it, cities, mayors, governors, etc. Wow. That well, is ambitious. That is certainly ambitious. Yes. And, and, Peter, your ultimate uh, uh, goal is to create no nation state, but just a state of uh, nature. Well, I mean, nation states are products of a sort of mafia mentality. Mm -hmm. People have emerged in evolution, and they had to keep restricting themselves because of implied scarcity. This really began at the, after the hunter-gatherer societies dissipated in the uh, in Neolithic Revolution, where we began to produce and unfortunately began to restrict, and ownership emerged and everything else. So it, you know, I, don't, I don't hold much credence in it. It's a really a detrimental thing, just like you don't want people to only engage in their own race or their own... You know, any kind of ideological structure, you know, jingoistic nationalism is a self-preserving idea. People say, oh, I love America. They don't really realize how biased that is. What do you mean? You don't love other countries? What does that even mean? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Surprised of all other nationalities. So it's, I, I can't help but kind of you know, shudder when I hear people speak in nationalistic senses. But we do have a... Peter, Peter, we are we are up against the wall. I hate to say, okay, this is right, a super fast hour. Let's do a town hall together, broadcast it, stream it, whatever, uh, and really bring folks in who love you. Thank you so much. Peter Joseph is the director of Zeitgeist Moving Forward. Thank you so much for coming on today, my friend.